Welcome. Today on Jack the Jeep, we're going to be redoing our subwoofers. Stay tuned. The reason I'm redoing my subwoofer box is it takes up a lot of room. It also, if I lay it on the bottom like this, I can't put anything in front of it. It hits the speakers. If I turn it over and put it to where it's facing up, um, rain can get on it when I'm topless or anything like that. So I'm going to be taking the subs out and putting them in a new box that I already got in the mail and uh, see how it works. So I cleared out all the screws and now I'm going to pop these open, see what the wires look like, disconnect them and go from there. Alright, so I have the speakers out. You can tell there's a lot of insulation in here. I'm going to pull this insulation out too, it's glued in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and use this insulation for my new box. Now that the insulation's out, I'm gonna disconnect the rest of these cables through the external port. That way I can use them on my new box as well. Now that I got this pulled out, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the new box. It already has one of these, but because these are all soldered on, I'm gonna use this and just utilize it as all. It worked great, I'm just gonna move it over. So if you work in your garage a lot, I would strongly encourage you to get one of these magnetic trays. It just lets you throw stuff in here and keep it organized. That way you're not chasing it all over the garage. It doesn't fall on the floor or anything like that. Now for the unveiling of the new box. What I went with, it's a dual, it's a dual speaker box just like the one I had. And it, you're probably thinking, why are you going from a smaller box to a bigger box? Well, it is. It is longer, but yet it's smaller. It's not going to take up as much room. And it also fires a little differently. So here it is. Here's the box. As you can tell, you don't see any holes on it. This actually, the side that I'm on now, it goes against the seat. I had to cut a little bit of it on the sides, and I did that earlier. I had legs that I cut out. Cardboard box, cut it out, put it on here, use my saw, just cut it off real quick, repainted it, touched it up. So it's good. I already set it in the Jeep, fitted it. Looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and roll it over and show you. It's actually a down firing box. So I don't have to worry about putting groceries against the speakers or anything like that. It's going to be down firing. They'll be out of the way, out of the weather. They'll be facing down. And part of my redo for the back of the Jeep not going to have to worry as much about the weather, but that's going to be the last step out of the four that I'm going to the Jeep. So as I look at the wiring and the way it was set up, I'm going to actually leave one of these in here with no wiring. Originally I was going to wire the, the subs from my amp to this and then splice it over to this one, but because these are soldered already together, I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole in this middle bracket that's in between the two holes. That way I can connect them underneath instead of out here. All right, that should be good enough to where I can fit these through. What I'm going to do prior to doing anything else, I'm going to get my shop back out. I'm going to go ahead and vacuum all this, get it cleaned out, make sure there's no extra debris in here. That way when I'm bumping, there's no, there's no rattling or anything. Now that I have it all vacuumed out, I'm going to go ahead and put my hose on the other side of my shop back, use it kind of like a leaf blower to blow any of the extra dust off. All right, now that it's all vacuumed and blown out and everything, it's good to go. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to get the insulation set up. i got to go get some adhesive so I can put it in there, get it a little tacky, put the, put the stuffing in there, and get it all cushioned. So what you want to do is you want to kind of fold this up like a dumpling. You want to put it the thickness you want, fold the corners, pull them all in together, like a little basket, 
stuff it in there, then you can let it go, kind of open it up in there and make sure it fits the way you want it to. So I know that this side fits. I know the other side the same size, so this side will fit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the adhesive, paint it in here, get a couple of staples, plaster them on there that way. They are sitting, it, it does sit really well, but I do want to make sure that it's, it's pulled over all the way. I'm going to get my hot glue gun and I'm going to actually fill that hole. That way this does not rattle as much in that little hole that I created. But first, I have to go to the store and get some adhesive. Be right back. All right, I'm back from the store. Got some adhesive, got a brush and a staple gun. I'm gonna go ahead and get this insulation put in here. I'm gonna put them both in, leave them in, paint the adhesive in, tack it on, and then go from there. So the reason I'm putting it directly on the brush, is I wanna make sure I'm putting it exactly where I want it. And then once I have it, a little adhesive on there. Tack it back down. And you want to make sure. Ah! Joking. I'm good. As you staple it in, if you're going to staple it on the side where that wire comes through, do not staple the wire. You're going to really be pissed about it. Uh, so. so what I'm doing now is I have these little extra pieces. I'm going to stretch them a little bit. I already put one on this side. I'm just going to stretch it. And I'm going to actually put it up under the lip of the hole. Just making sure there's nothing extra that could be vibrating. And these I am stapling in. So now that I have really good coverage, I can wiggle these. And unless I'm hitting the side, you can't hear it. So I know that these are really good. That way when, it's, when the subs are vibrating, these wires aren't gonna be hitting any wood. I had uh, looked in here and I made sure there was no wood that I could fill anywhere with the padding. And if so, I would stretch it over a little bit and staple it or glue it in. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and pop a little bit of pilot holes in each of these for both speakers. That way nothing's ripping them. These will catch on and go right through. I don't want to go all the way through because I've already worked so hard on keeping the inside clean. I don't want to have to vacuum it out again. So I'm not going to go all the way through it. I'm just making quick pilot holes. As I look at the back of these subs, they actually have a little bit of a seal, for the lack of better terms, on it. So I'm not gonna seal anything around this, actually. I'm gonna just leave it be. It's a little, uh, it's not sticky, but it's smushy. So I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna screw them in, and go from there. Prior to screwing it in, make sure you hook up the speaker. I made a mental note that the positive was actually more copper colored and the negative was more of a silver color. So now I'm gonna line up the holes and put a screw on each side. Go ahead and anchor it down. Make sure you don't do it too tight. Don't torque them too tight. You can always go back and hand tighten them. Do it more of a star pattern. That way you're not stripping any of those holes out also. Someone probably is out there thinking, why aren't you testing it first? I'm not too worried about it. I didn't do any soldering. I didn't do anything that was too major. I'm just switching some subs over, so should be good. Because there was no holes in this, I'm using the screws that I pulled out of the Kiko box. And again, more copper colored, more silver, silver colored. Go ahead and put the negative on, which was the silver one. The good thing about using this old wiring harness and everything, it's all already done. I don't have to crimp, I don't have to do any of that. Kicker's a good product. I actually bought the old box with these. 
at a pawn shop for 50 to 60 bucks. Great deal. It comes with the, the external port on it. But again, I wanted to switch it up a little bit on the back of the Jeep, so. Because I'm going to have about two to three inches from the sub to the bottom of the Jeep, I might eventually go and look for two cages that I could put around it, but that'll then close up the bottom of it to where I can't slide anything underneath. Not that I would, but I'm not sure I'm gonna weigh on those options later. Again, line up your hole with your screw. Start it, don't tighten it yet until you get the other side. That way all your screws line up quick and easy. All right, all the screws are in, everything's good to go. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, put it in the Jeep, hook it up, show you how it looks, and better yet, how it sounds. Look at the size of that bad boy, stinger and all. So what I'm doing now is I'm just making sure it's not too high. I think I'm good to go on it. And the reason why is part four of my junk in the trunk overhaul has something to do with this back here and uh, you have to stay tuned for that one.